As a YouTuber, you need a camera that can do some specific things. And the powerful Canon R6 Mark II packs some amazing features. This camera isn't cheap, but in the same time, it's not the most expensive. So here's the question. Is the Canon R6 Mark II camera an overkill just for YouTube? When I want to record a video with this camera for my YouTube channel, the first things which I usually set up are the resolution and the frame rate. The Canon R6 Mark II camera has a full frame 4K sensor that can record up to 60 frames per second in NTSC mode, but if you use the PAL mode, you can go up to 50 frames per second. You can of course use the 24 and 30 frames per second like I do here for my videos. Now 50 or 60 FPS is great for B-roll shots too, especially if your lens doesn't have image stabilization. When you slow down the footage in editing, the shaky image will become smoother and you also have the benefit of having a longer shot if you slow down the video to 50% speed, let's say. And 4K is of course the highest resolution this camera can handle internally, but you can record in 1080p as well. Not only in 50 or 60 FPS, but you can go up to 120 and 180 frames per second. And this is really huge because you can slow down the footage up to 7.5 times if you record it with 180 frames per second to get a very, very smooth slow motion. So is the 4K resolution an overkill? No, there are many reasons to use 4K in 2023. The major benefit of using a 4K resolution is the fact that you can make your editing much more dynamic while you don't ruin the image. What do I mean by that? Well, you can simulate a two camera scene in editing. So it looks like you had two different cameras recording you and you can crop in to make it more interesting because people usually get bored fast when they are watching a very long headshot recording, especially the younger ones. So it's a good idea to make cuts and zoom in sometimes to emphasize some things in the video while you talk to the camera. And due to the 4K image, even when cropping in like I do now, you don't lose too much resolution. And trust me, nobody will notice, especially the people who are watching on their phones. So the second benefit on 4K is that even the majority of the people watch from their phones, so they are using a smaller screen it could seem unimportant, I know, but your video will remain on the channel for many years ahead. Did you thought about this? Think about someone who will watch a video from your channel five years from now. A full HD image will look like an old movie, while the 4K will still be relevant. Especially if you're vlogging from beautiful places or filming things related to technology like I do here on my channel. People want sharp and clear images. Now let's talk about 120 and 180 frames per second. Is this overkill in terms of frame rates? In my opinion, these could be too much sometimes and you may find yourself using them very rarely. But don't get me wrong here, recording in 120 and 180 is a lot of fun. I really like slow motion, trust me. But the use cases for these are a bit limited, unless you want to capture something that's moving very fast, like sports, birds, or a waterfall, if you're vlogging. Anyway, I need to have the courage to say that these high frame rates are overkill for a YouTuber. Even if they are cool, 60 FPS is very often enough to slow down things. Also, let's not ignore that this camera can support a microphone up there on the shoe mount, and it has a microphone input. In fact, let's be grateful for those things because audio plays a major part in your videos. Your voice should be as clear as possible. However, your voice alone is not enough sometimes. When you're editing videos, music plays a huge role when it comes to the mood that you want to transmit to your audience. Music makes people feel something. It amplifies the aesthetic or tone of your videos. And this is where a music licensing platform like Track Club, the sponsor of this video, comes into play and makes it so easy for you as a creator to choose and fully customize the music exactly the way you want. Let's say I choose this track, for example. Hit play. And then I click here on the mix lab. As you can see, all the individual stems are listed here from vocals, drums, bass, and other instruments. And you have control over everything here, including volumes. For example, let's say I don't want the vocals. I click here to mute them. 
Maybe I don't like one of the bass lines. We have two here. This is how it sounds now. And I can also change the volumes of the stems if I want, or mute everything except for the drums, because maybe I want to use the drums for the intro. So many possibilities. And at the end, I just need to download the customized version from here and insert it into my project. You can get a free one month trial of Track Club if you use my affiliate link down in the description. So here's another cool thing about the Canon R6 Mark II. It has no video recording limit. Older cameras like the EOS R, for example, are limited to a 30 minutes recording time. And this means you need to press record at every 30 minutes. Quite a bit stressing when you want to record talking headshots like I do now. I mean, it's another thing that you need to take care of, right? If you're a one-man band like I am. But the R6 Mark II doesn't have any recording limit. So it's amazing. And the good thing is that the camera doesn't overheat at all in 4K 25p. I made some testing where I was able to record until the battery died, two hours and 27 minutes. That's more than enough to shoot a talking head video continuously. On 4K 50p, the camera overheated after one hour and 25 minutes. But do you record for many hours at 50 or 60 frames per second? It's a question. Do you? The fact that this camera doesn't have the recording limit is amazing for a YouTuber. So this feature is um, definitely not an overkill. I know Sony doesn't have this problem, but hey, I'm a Canon user, maybe you're a Canon user, and this is, uh, this is a game changer. Let's open a champagne. Now, let's talk about normal recording mode and advanced recording mode. In normal recording mode, this camera shoots in 8-bit H.264. In the advanced mode, you can record in C-Log3. In 10-bit, H.265. H.264 and H.265 are codecs. H.265 is a bit more compressed, so it's a bit more harder to handle by the processor and graphics card when you are editing in 4K. But there is a workaround for this. To create proxies at lower resolutions, and then render at full resolution when the project is ready. The main benefit to choose H.265 is to be able to shoot in 10-bit C-Log3, which allows you to capture much more information in highlights and shadows. The image has a lack of contrast out of the camera, but you can correct it in editing and obtain really good-looking images with great contrast, colors, and improved dynamic range. So recording in 10-bit C-Log3 is a huge benefit if you want to obtain the best color grading possible in the editing process while also keeping the file size at a decent level thanks to the H.265 codec. So is this overkill for a YouTuber? It depends if you're a beginner in video making or if you are advanced and much more familiar with color correction, color grading, skin correction, and so on. But I assume that if you choose to buy this camera, you are a bit more advanced or you have serious plans to pave your way from beginner to pro. The Canon R6 Mark II has also dual card slots, which is amazing because if something happens to one of your cards or something gets deleted, you can always have a backup on the second card. It's very, very useful when you shoot weddings and events. I mean, when you shoot things that happen one time, then they they cannot be repeated. And for YouTube, it's nice to have it, to be honest. And the feeling that it gives you is actually very similar to the no recording time limit. It, it just makes you feel safer. It's safe. Don't be afraid. You don't lose anything. You have two cards, Chris. You could be a YouTuber who travels a lot and wants to document things that don't happen twice, like for example, meeting Casey Neistat or Peter McKinnon or Gerald Undone. He's crazy. So the dual card slots are not overkill at all. And it's uh, something I was waiting for years to be completely honest with you since I bought the Canon EOS R. And um, I, I don't think I need to mention the flip screen. It's there, it's not an overkill. It's something that you really need as a YouTuber and as a vlogger. And also, I don't think I need to mention the importance of good, fast, and precise autofocus when you film yourself or other people. The eye-tracking autofocus, from, from my point of view, is one of the most 
powerful tools that were ever introduced in a camera. Since then, it just got better and better. And we need to be grateful. We need to appreciate this. Eye tracking autofocus is... Pff, oh, it's so good. The Canon R6 Mark II has a more advanced algorithm on the autofocus side, and it comes with improvements on recognizing the person's eyes, head, or torso. It also recognizes the eyes of cats, dogs, birds, horses, and zebras. Could this be an overkill just for making YouTube videos? Not at all. It's absolutely great for making YouTube videos like this one, podcasts as well. Maybe you're filming in Safari and it's useful. You know, there are zebras there. <laughs> but anyway, you have amazing eye tracking autofocus capabilities, no joke. And it's a very precise feature to have in a camera. If you want to get this camera, I think you should know what you can expect when you're doing the unboxing. Watch this video because we need to discuss some things that are very, very important for Canon users. My unboxing experience was a bit weird, to be honest. 